the Lost Rites and Rituals of Freemasonry. The first in the uh, Lost Rites series. This came out in 2017 with Lewis Masonic. Um, beautiful book. And I've always wanted to do a book like this, really, that examines some of the Lost Rites of the 18th century, some of the more exotic rites from 18th century Europe. And this book allowed me to do it. It looks at uh, the evolution of some of these rites, really, and how they uh, progressed, stopped working, restarted again under different guises. Uh, the Ella Coer, the Rite of Zinnendorf, Cagliostro's Egyptian Rite. And Cagliostro really links us to the uh, occult revival. Uh, Alistair Crowley, of course, thought he was a reincarnation of Cagliostro. And um, Erwin, the friend of John Yarker, tried to get in touch with uh, Cagliostro during a seance and succeeded. So uh, a lot of these early rites from the 18th century inspired the occult revival of the 19th century. So there's a bit of a link there that I wanted to, wanted to explore and uh, allowed me to look at all these different rites. Fesler's rectified rite, the rite of the African builders or architects, the rite of perfection and the order of the royal secret, which has um, been uh, written about recently by other writers. Um, that are exploring the early Scottish Rite, the early developments of the Scottish Rite. This also allowed me to re-examine the um, Liverpool Masonic Rebellion in a way, especially Michael Alexander Gage, who owned the, the Franken manuscripts, or a copy of it, and uh, um, that was worth exploring and tying in. And of course, some of these rites uh, explored many different aspects of Freemasonry. Um, the Order of the Golden Rosy Cross, for example, was uh, connected to uh, alchemy and the Enlightenment as well. So, you know, it's, it, it was entwining different um, themes. So it was a great book to do. This is the second edition, or a prototype of the second edition. And this will be out shortly. Explores different things. The Knights Templar Kadosh. Table Lodges. Which is something that occurred with the uh, lodges that were under the Wigan Grand Lodge in England. And the last chapter examines some of these English craft rituals. All the different variations. The Nigerian ritual, for example. Richard Carlyle's ritual, which I uh, wrote about in the second of this series. The West End ritual, the Bottomley ritual, the Humber use. And some of these rituals are um, um, only practiced by, you know, maybe a handful of lodges. My particular lodge has its own ritual, which is distinct to that lodge. So, And of course, I had to do a chapter on lost archaic symbols. And uh, this particular one, this rainbow featuring the uh, caricatures of the, the fall of man in the garden. The lost goddess and the third pillar, which became a paper as well. Um, that I presented a number of times. The broken pillar. So of course I'm looking at this from an English perspective as well. So uh, it's a great, great book to do. A really nice seller. Um, footnotes, loads of footnotes, bibliography, loads of illustrations. Um, quite a nice book, really, and it sold really well and launched this series. So this is The Lost Rites and Rituals of Freemasonry. Thanks for watching.